Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here in attendance. All right, the village of Mamaronic and the town of Mamaronic are doing this fraud scam prevention. I just want to make some introductions first. My name is Lieutenant Ron Knudsen with the Larchmont Police Department. We have Detective Amy LaRosa from the town of Mamaronic. We have Detective Danielle Lent from our police department in Larchmont. And we have Chris McNerney, the chief of the Larchmont Police Department. And I think he might want to say a couple of words quick. Uh, thank you, Ron. So good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank you for having us here. Uh, you've got some, some great uh, police officers and, and uh, detectives that are going to talk a little bit today about some of the scams. Uh, but just by a quick showing of the hands, who here has been scammed or a scam has been attempted against you? So there's a lot of hands that went up. And I mean attempted where somebody tried to get your information. They tried to get you to send money. I can tell you personal experience. My mother-in-law, who's 82 years old, yesterday she calls me because whenever something happens and there's a question, she calls me and she said, I got something from PayPal and it said I have to respond immediately. <laughs> and I said, you, you don't have PayPal, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but this happens all the time and, and unfortunately, our senior population is very often targeted. So it's extremely important that you have this information, you have the knowledge, and I think one general rule of thumb, you're gonna hear a lot of good information today, but one general rule of thumb is when somebody calls you, texts you, requesting money, never send it. Never send it. Uh, if you get a phone call, don't send it. And if there's a question, talk to a loved one. You have to talk to a loved one before you send any money anywhere. So I'm not going to speak anymore. I know that you have a, a great schedule here. So I want to thank you again for having us. And I wish you all the best. And please stay safe. All right, so thank you again. I'm going to turn it over to Lieutenant Knudsen. You know, as the chief just said, all right, we're here. And, and you're the focus group today, all right, for us to give this information out. But it's not solely, all right, seniors. It's not solely people that, all right, are a little bit older, OK? you might not have the same tech savviness as the younger generation. I know that's the case for me personally. I might be the case for some of you. So some of these scams are perpetrated, all right, because people realize that you might not have that knowledge. But the information that we're putting out here is not only for you, it's for everybody. All right, so take this, as the chief alluded to, all right, take this information back, all right, and if there's a question or concern about something being legitimate, all right, if you have somebody, a trusted family member, you can reach out to do that. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the chief has called for all of his family's questions, all right? But, all right, just so you know, if you don't have somebody you can reach out to, call the police department, all right? Call your local police department where you live and say, look, I got a phone call from Con Ed. They say they're going to turn off my service unless, all right, I write them out a check or go to the bank and get $1,500 and somebody's going to come to my house and pick it up, all right? Or somebody told me I have to go and get gift cards at Stop and Shop or CVS or something like that. If you don't have somebody, a network that you can reach out to, all right, call your police department, all right, and speak to the officers there and you know, if you have further questions, they might transfer it back to one of the detectives who do the investigations and so on. So we can get that information and we can do that vetting for you, all right? But nobody should be asking you for your personal information over the phone. They shouldn't be reaching out to you. It's different if you're calling, all right, if you have Chase or Citibank or Bank of America. If you're calling the bank and you're speaking to somebody at the bank, all right, you initiated that phone call. All right, but if you're getting a, a phone call from somebody who says they're from a Chase private client and I need to know your bank account number and your soul, the bank already has that information. That's right. They already have all your information, so they wouldn't be asking for it again. But the people on the phone, they can sound very credible. All right, and that's how people, all right, are lulled into giving them in the information. But anyhow, we're going to start the program. I'm going to turn it over to Detective Danielle Lent right now. 
Good afternoon, everyone. All right, so we have our PowerPoint up here. It's called to Helping Seniors Protect Themselves, and I'll go through the slides. There's not too many, but um, I'll read them out loud in case it's hard to see in the back, all right? And so general safety concerns, targets, scam artists assume seniors are unaware of potential harms or are overly trusting of strangers. And again, that's not always just the seniors, but um, it, it happens quite, quite often that we've seen here. So um, the exploitation or harm is preventable if the would-be victim is educated and well-informed about the latest techniques used by those who victimize our seniors. So when you are home alone, beware of strangers at your door requesting to come inside your residence. Never let a stranger in, even to use the telephone. Um, the telephone and computer solicitation scams, these things happen all the time to everyone, but thieves and scam artists target those who they think are most vulnerable, like we've said. Um, scam patterns. I'm sure some of you have been made aware of the grandchild in jail scam. Yep, so in this scam, the caller will claim to be a friend or a relative that got into trouble or was involved in an accident, sometimes in another country, and needs money for bail to get out of jail. And in some cases, the scammer will tell the victim they are a police officer and their grandchild or other relative has been arrested and needs to have money sent to them for bail. The scammer will require that a gift card be purchased at a local pharmacy chain or Home Depot. Um, we've seen uh, other stores, Sephora gift cards, Target gift cards, um, and then they'll ask for the card number to be provided over the phone to the caller, sometimes the PIN number as well. Victims have also been required to send money via Western Union, MoneyGram, um, here's another one, IRS tax warrant. The caller were claimed to be an agent or a police officer from the IRS calling about a past due tax balance that is owed. Caller will tell the victim that unless the debt is paid immediately, they will send a team to the victim's home to immediately arrest them. And the scammer will also request that the IRS tax warrant be paid with, again, a gift card or a money gram. I'm going to just interrupt for one second on that. This scam is coming up. So this scam we see, all right, it happens at the end of April and into May. And this scam, all right, usually you get a phone call, and if you were receiving a refund check, all right, which quite a few people do receive, all right, they'll tell you that, all right, the check is going to be sent out, all right, you're going to get an additional check, all right, but we need more information. They might even ask you for money, all right, to receive it. Now, the IRS, if they're sending you a refund, they wouldn't be asking you for money, all right? But this is a time-dated scam that usually happens, all right? And again, tax day coming up, April 15th, this is the time predominantly when this scam is perpetrated. All right, and then we have here the delinquent Con Edison bill. Um, caller will claim to be a representative of Con Ed. Scammer will have the victim's correct Con Edison account number and then advise the resident that their Con Ed bill is past due and must be paid immediately to avoid termination of service. Um, so from our investigations of these uh, scams, it's been determined that Suspects committing these crimes have often obtained personal information via Facebook, Instagram, or other social media. Um, in the case of more senior victims, Googling home addresses, dates of births, phone numbers, all those things that are public information can um, assist them in these scams. Residents are reminded that no government agency will ever demand a fine to be paid via Western Union or a prepaid debit card or gift card. And the ATM and distraction scams we've seen quite often here. The targeted victim will go into an ATM vestibule and insert their bank card. After entering their PIN, a stranger will come up behind them and place a couple of dollar bills on the ground, and the scammer will then tap them on the shoulder, informing them 
that they seemingly drop some cash. And then when the victim goes down to pick up the cash, the scammer reaches into the ATM and switches the bank card with a dummy card and then we'll take off with that card and use it elsewhere, thereby stealing the victim's money, which we did have that here. It was a $5 bill that um, was supposedly dropped by the victim. This can also happen while entering your vehicle after completing a bank transaction where the scammer has an accomplice that takes your pocketbook or contents in the pocketbook, which we also had um, the thumbtacks placed behind the the rear tires of the vehicle. We had that um, an elderly gentleman had left the bank. He had uh, withdrawn $3,000 cash, got into his car, and a female suspect went up to his driver's side window and said, don't back up. There's something behind your tire. You're going to ruin your tire if you back up. And he got out to look, and then her male accomplice reached in and grabbed the envelope with the cash. Yeah, they were fortunately caught. Um, and then check washing, holiday time and birthdays, sending out a card to a loved one, um, celebrating an accomplishment, holiday or birthday, be aware of the check washing, they'll fish out checks out of the mailbox and reissue the check for a larger dollar amount and make the payee their name. Um, yep. Online banking, yeah, go ahead. I understand that. You send the card with a check. How do they get the check? And, and stolen from the mail. They just the open up the envelope and just, yeah. But if you put it in, in, the, in the mail, uh, they'll pull their fishing the them out of the mailbox. The they, that's, they can fish that out of the mail. Yeah, that's why a lot of the mailboxes you've seen have converted to yeah. like that thin slit, slit that you can try to prevent that from happening, but they still manage to. Yes, in, in regards to the United States Postal Service, they're very reputable, all right, and, and they do the best they can, all right, but what happens is the mailboxes that are out there, the ones in Larchmont have all been retrofitted, all right, they have teeth in them now in the slots, but even with them being retrofitted, even saying that, all right, the mail personnel let us know at the police department, all right, they're still finding, all right, the sticky traps, the sticky mouse traps, all right, and they're putting them on like a wire mesh and running it down through the slot. They used to use fishing string, and the teeth would cut it as they were pulling it back up. And that was the whole reason for the Postal Service to put the teeth in. But now with the metal wire, okay, the teeth don't cut it, so they can still get mail that way. All right, there's also been theft of the postal keys. All right, those postal keys that open up the mailboxes to get mail. All right, the village of Mamaroneck, right in front of their post office, about a month ago, got hit. All right, we've had mail stolen in Larchmont in the past from the mailbox directly in front of police headquarters, in front of Village Hall. So it's happened. We suggest everybody go to the post office and mail at the post office if it's something that's sensitive. And of course, a lot of these scams, all right, a lot of these frauds that take place, all right, they're around certain times of the year. So the best time, all right, for somebody to try and steal mail out of a, a mailbox is during Christmas time when you send in a check to your grandchild or your child or whoever it is, you know, as a Christmas gift or something like that. So again, we suggest, all right, going to the post office itself. And if it's something that, if, if you're sending, if you're very generous, all right, and you're sending some, a big check out to somebody, send it certified mail. All right. Yes, sir. All right. And we've, he was saying that he had some mail that, he sent it, all right, and it was stolen. And we've had, we've caught individuals in Larchmont, okay, that have actually come from, I think, Brooklyn, all right? They came from Brooklyn, and they were working for a gang. And what they were doing after the mail trucks were delivering mail to people's homes, they were following the mail trucks, getting out of the car after the mail truck left, okay, running up and stealing the mail out of the mailbox, all right? 
And then if it's a credit card application or if it's a credit card bill, you have the account number. Okay. Yes. Hi, I'm here because on February 25th, I mailed <clears throat> four checks and paid bills as I have since 1975 in the village of Mimaranek, and I put them in the outside box, even though people were warning me not to, and I, they did not get through, all four of them, gone. And, um, you know, I found out from notices and over, double, you know, a, I mean, I got, <laughs> the Con Ed bill was twice as much. They were nice enough not to penalize me, but it was a mess. So I asked them in the post office if they'd had any, you know, tricky stuff going on. They were very nice, and they said, we really can't answer those questions. Um, so I didn't know who to report it to or what to do, and now I'm very nervous. I just paid my taxes um, in the, you know, village uh, town office just now in person. And um, I don't know really what to do. Uh, okay, to answer your question there, that incident is the incident that I was referring that took place. It was over a two week period in the village of Mamaronic. Yeah. And it was the mailboxes that were in front. All right, and I I'm sorry, I should have communicated that better to you. When I'm telling you to go to the post office to mail something, so uh, exactly. Uh, uh, and again, I apologize, I didn't communicate that correctly. I mean, go inside. All right, and put the mail inside, not on the mailbox, outside. And again, I, I, this is nothing against any of the postal service employees. They're doing the best they can. It's not, it's not, they're not the individuals that are going to steal the mail, okay? So, but you need to be very careful with that because that's a prevalent crime too. And we've had, you know, we've been very fortunate in Larchmont, we, we have proactive police officers and we've made some arrests, and that's how we know what these trends are, besides networking with local municipalities, okay, and going to trainings and going to meetings so we can all confer on what's happening, what are the current trends, all right, so we know how to address them and, and what are other police departments doing to prevent it, all right, and so that's what we're trying to do. Very quickly, um, I just want to say, now I'm nervous because all the numbers on the bottom and maybe they could white out my name or you know, fiddle with the checks further, so I don't like any and of you want to comment, Chief? Well, yeah, I, I think that brings up a point about check washing. Do, does everybody understand what check washing is? Okay. So what happens is if you write a check and you make it payable to, to a payee and you put a dollar amount in and you write the dollar amount in, these criminals are so sophisticated now that they're able to erase your ink and put their own ink in there. And that's what we call washing a check. It happens. Do the banks realize that the, che that the check has been washed? They can't. It, it's, they're using such sophisticated techniques now that it's, it's not really uh, prevalent to the naked eye. So it goes through, and then when you, know, you can test it, you get your money back. But it happens very, very often now. I was told to use some kind of a gel pen. That, that's one recommendation we make. It's harder to, to wash that off. We, we've, we've heard of cases where it's washed off, but we do recommend using a gel ink. It, it, it embeds in the, in the paper a little bit more than your regular ballpoint ink. Thank you. Um, I think that's pretty much it for our PowerPoint here. We have some additional safety tips. Always secure your personal items, lock your car doors, all hours of the day and night when you're not operating your vehicle, do not leave any valuables in your vehicles unattended, bicycles, etc. And we'll leave these numbers up on the screen uh, till the end. Those are our emergency contact numbers for all three uh, police departments. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so just to touch upon some of the things that had um, kind of already been mentioned, um, I think the, the key takeaway for everybody is we're, we're all vulnerable right now, especially online like you were mentioning, um, via email and text. Um, every day where I see emails come in my email box that say to me, click here urgently, um, and we all have to just get used to stop, read it again, and don't click anything. Um, don't answer that phone call if you suspect it's spam, you don't know where the number is coming from, let it go to voicemail. Um, just read through everything. 
if you know if you have that feeling like wait I didn't order anything what is this email saying to me stop and and take a minute to think that wait maybe this could be a scam um, and then most importantly do not go give out any information if you get to the point where maybe you did answer that phone call when they are asking personal information that's not that something should be a red flag should be raised up right we're not giving out personal information we should not be giving out our financial information um, no credit card information no passwords or anything like that should be given out um, but we, we all are susceptible, especially online. We see it, we've see we seen multiple times where people are working on their computer. Um, they're told that they've got a virus, right? They click on these links. Next thing you know, their computer has been infected. And now they're being you know threatened to have to pay money to get it unlocked. Um, so those are just some things that um, I've seen. Other things that I think have been going around to be aware of, um, people coming up to your door and claiming to be a contractor and wanting to get into your home. They want to offer you up some type of service. Um, be wary of that, right? If, if you're not, um, there should be really no solicitation um, unless they've requested it ahead of time with the town or the village of Larchmont. Um, but if you're you letting anybody inside your home, I think most people should you know avoid doing that. Um, and if you have somebody at your doorstep, you know, requesting service, you know, I would say no, thank you. Maybe take their information and that's it. Um, if you even feel comfortable answering the door, that's up to you. Um, some other things that I've seen also, and it was mentioned, is um, the package scams. That has been going around more often too with email and text. They're telling you, oh, you missed a package. Click here to reschedule, things like that. Um, again, it really comes down to uh, not clicking on those links, right, and being very, you know, cautious with any type of text or email that's asking you to click into a link. Um, yep. I can, um, I don't believe, like, I, I know through, like, our technology department, we, we can see it. It's the clicking through that could, is going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say in reference to writing checks that you want to mail out to people, maybe it's better to go directly to the bank and the, if the person you send me to has an account with the same bank that you got, you could, you could do an account transfer. Or if they're with another bank, then you could do a wire transfer. So instead of writing checks, do transfers. Right. Um, another option, too, if, if you have concerns and you're doing online, I know that um, there is the option to enable multi-factor authentication. Right, so that's an option. If it's an option on that any account, I would I would recommend doing that. Um, so that's in addition to where you might have to put a password, but then after you put in a password, it sends another code. You maybe have to put in a secret password, or it sends a code to your email or your phone. They have to. Ask. So it's a two-step process, um, and that's something if you are concerned about online, you can look for banks and things of that nature that offer that additional layer of security. I, I got a phone call uh, last week uh, ask, asking me um, if, how did they say it? They said they wanted me to uh, attend a um, stock market meeting. So I didn't answer it. So then a couple of days later, they called to ask my son's ad, uh, phone number because he's whatever, involved in it. And I said to her, why are you asking this? Since when do the stock, uh, does a uh, stock market ask for a, a meeting? Do you get a, a, a letter to say mm -hmm. you, you can come to vote? I said, is this a scam? <laughs> she said, no, miss, it's not. I said, well, I don't have the answer. Anything on the phone and don't call again. And I hung up. And that was it. Yeah, yeah so that was it, but I think it was a scam. Yeah, I, I, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who didn't want to write a check for her niece. She sent $21 worth of lottery tickets in the card. The, the card was stolen, so they got $21 worth of lottery tickets. Mm. Yeah. Yep. 
You have to be careful in, in all capacities nowadays, whether it's, I, I know we're talking about online banking, we're talking about emails. Look, the village of Larchmont, the police department, we were, all right, getting scam emails, all right? Village Hall was getting st scam emails. And what we did is, and what I'm gonna suggest to you in regards to your computers and email, all right, and all the other communications you have, all right, have some type of antivirus program, whether it's a Norton or somebody else, all right? We had to increase the spyware and the malware, all right, for all the village employees, not just the police department, but everybody that was upstairs in Village Hall to ensure, all right, because we were getting hit, all right, with all these email scams, all right? We had messages, this person wants to change their bank account to do the direct deposit and switch it for this judge and put it into this bank and this, that, and everything else. They were all scams. So everybody is affected, all right? It's not just you, it's everybody is affected by this. If you see something that comes in, all right, if you don't have a Walmart account, all right, and somebody's telling you, all right, you have something that's gonna come to your house from Walmart, all you have to do is click, don't click, all right? Every week, all right, myself personally, I get something from PayPal about my, allegedly my PayPal account. I don't have a PayPal account. My wife has the PayPal account for us. I don't have one, all right? Every week I get one or two messages, all right, on my personal email saying that I need to go into my PayPal account or whatever have you. Again, I don't have a PayPal account, so I just delete it and erase it, all right? But you need to be careful. Amy brought up a great point before when she talked about people knocking on your door and solicitors, all right? We just had a former mayor in Larchmont, all right, that was potentially gonna be a victim, all right? Somebody came by, drove by, all right, all right, knocked on the door, said, I, I realize that you have, all right, a leaky, a leaky roof, all right, that you have a hole in your roof. Now, how somebody from the street could even tell that, I don't know. But anyhow, so the guy went up there, and then he gave her an estimate of, all right, thousands of dollars or whatever have you. Thankfully, she wasn't scammed, all right, heads up after the fact, all right, realizing that I didn't call anybody here to come check out my roof or what have you. So you need to be, all right, cognizant of that, all right? Now, there are solicitors that do a go around, but in Larchmont, as in the town, all right, they're vetted, okay? So we have solicitor's permit that just started recently, all right, under Chief McNerney's watch, all right, where if somebody wants to solicit, a business wants to solicit in Larchmont, all right, they're gonna be vetted by us in the police department first, and then we're gonna give them a solicitor's permit. All right, I'm not talking about the girls going around selling Girl Scout cookies, all right, but I'm talking about somebody that says that uh, you need a new driveway, or I want to reseal coat, all right, your driveway, or I, I notice that you have crooked steps and I can fix your steps or what have you. So you have to be aware of those types of scams too. Those are not scams that are financial scams through a bank. They're not over the internet usually. Those are in-person scams. All right, but they happen a lot too. All right, yes. Could you ask to see the permit, or would that be sort of? Permit? In Larchmont, you can ask. Yes, do you have a solicitor's permit with Larchmont? Uh -huh. And if it's a commercial business, they should not be soliciting you. And then you could call us up in the police department, and we'll vet the individual. Okay. The, the other scam is when they come to your door and tell you that a tree is hitting the wires, and I want to show you. They go out and show you wires while the other one goes in your house mm -hmm. and ransacks. Yeah. Oh. And we've had that also with yeah. utility workers. Yeah. All right, fraudulent yeah. utility yeah. workers, they're saying they're from Con Ed. All right, they need to go downstairs and read your meter or what have you, okay? And then while somebody is going downstairs with you, somebody else is coming in the house and then going up to the master bedroom usually and ransacking that looking for jewelry or valuables or what have you, well, Con all right? Con That's correct. And a lot of the meter reading is done remotely now even. So it's not even, nobody has to show up anymore. It's done remotely. And the same with the, the water readings in large one also. We just upgraded a couple years ago where they don't have to come into your house and go into your basement and look at a water meter. Right. All right. But, but what we're trying to do is we're, we're just trying to give you this information out there. We don't want you to be victimized. We don't want anybody to be victimized. All right, but this, it's a trend, and as I said earlier, all right, 
Unfortunately, it's increasing, all right? Because if somebody can get on a phone, or, all right, or send 20 emails and they can dupe one person, okay, then it's worthwhile for them, mm -hmm. all right? And it, it, it's very hard for us in law enforcement to track them down, all right? A lot of this type of stuff, I mean, we've been fortunate because, again, we have proactive police officers. We network with other agencies, okay? So we've been fortunate we've caught some of these individuals, but it's very hard to catch these types of individuals, especially if it's an email and somebody brought it, all right, it's from outside the country or it's from somewhere else. It's, it, it's from, from, from a country down in Africa or something like that, that the emails are coming through. I mean, this is almost impossible for us, all right, to try and track down. But just so you know, all right, we work with all the financial institutions too, all right, and they all have investigative units, all right, and most of those are staffed by people that were in law enforcement, all right, retired from law enforcement, all right, so we're working with them. We create a network with them, all right, so we have contacts at Chase, at Citibank, Bank of America, so when we need to reach out and we want to get camera footage, all right, from somebody that went into an ATM and they scammed somebody, or somebody went into the bank and, and, and they have a, a washed check that they're going to cash or whatever have you. We're doing the best that we can to solve these crimes and catch these individuals. All right. And we're networking with all these different all right, businesses and the investigative units, all right, the security units in these banks and everything else. But it, it's, it, it's tedious, it's time consuming, and it's difficult at times to get this information. So. We're trying to make the target, being you and us, the target, we're trying to harden the target. It's called target hardening. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to give you this information, and we're going to ask you to pass this information along to your loved ones, your friends, all right, to get this information out there. We're not saying don't trust anybody. That's right. All right? We're not saying that at all, okay? But you need to be careful. All right, especially when it comes to financial information, personal information, all right, you need to be careful because once somebody has it, they can pretty much, with a computer, can do whatever they want to do almost. Excuse me, I get letters from agencies like a health insurance company or um, any uh, bank institution that they got hacked. So they have my inform all my information. So that we try, but it comes from outside. And, my help. And you're a hundred percent right. And, and sometimes you, you see that in the media. All right. You'll see that on the news. All right. You'll get a notice in the mail that your bank, so many accounts, so many thousands of accounts from American Express. All right. All right. The information was hacked or whatever have you. Uh, so we should sign up for uh, other uh, programs that will protect us. How am I going to fight this big system? All, all you're going to do is you're going to do the best you can. That's all you can do is the best you can, all right? There's always going to be, all right, bad guys out there trying to get your information, all right, and trying to make a living, all right, by stealing money, stealing funds, or whatever have you, all right? That's just the way it is, all right? You have to do the best that you can do. Of, of course, you're not Citibank, and you're not Chase, and you're not American Express, or what have you. And those big companies are doing the best to try and keep your information private, okay? But it's difficult, all right? It's, it's difficult because, all right, with all the technology that's going on nowadays, look, I can get an app, and I can talk on my phone, and I can have a different voice. All right, I can talk like a female on my phone. I'm, I'm talking into my phone right now as a male. All right, it could be coming out the other way, all right, as a female. So there's so many different things that are taking place already, all right? And then you have this artificial intelligence that's all coming to the forefront, which we in law enforcement are gonna have to deal with, and, and we don't fully understand it yet, all right? So we're gonna have to deal with those potential things that are gonna be coming in the future too. All right, as far as, Frank, go ahead. I was up with some people we were skiing and at, at the table we were having lunch with three Verizon guys. And I mentioned this to them. And they said, oh yeah, that happens. Who stole your landline? And I said, bandwidth. And they said, you'll get that back. 
and we got it back working with the FCC and working with Verizon. It was a real bitch. We finally got our landline back and we now use it. But someone came to the house and there's a little box like this where the phone lines come in. Right. And, it, and he opened it up and in there there were like two lines going in and they usually go like this, but they were switched. And he switched them back. He says, this is what did it. So I asked him, how could someone do this? You have a key. And he says, you'll be surprised what people can do these days. And then I said, why would someone want my Yeah, phone? what's the motive? Okay. So with a little help from me, I said, well, how about this? I get a lot of spam calls from area code 873 or something like that. I don't know anything about it. But if I got one from 914834, I might pick that up. Maybe that's a reason, but he said, yeah, there, there could be a lot of other reasons. And there are people stealing phone numbers. I'd never heard of this. This happened to us two, three months ago. Yeah, that's news to me. Amy, uh, Danielle, have you ever heard that? Anybody stealing a home phone number? Chief? No. No. What did yeah. Say? So yeah. the gentleman said that somebody stole his home phone number. And he was speaking to some Verizon workers, all right, and they explained to him that that is a reality and that does happen. I'm not sure what the motive is, but possibly for additional scams or something of that nature. So we went over, just to recap, let's recap here quick, all right? So I'm going to ask you just to keep your hands down for a few minutes, all right? Uh, we went over some scams, all right, with utility companies, whether it's Con Ed, all right, we went over some scams that come over the internet, whether it's it's Amazon or whether it's a Walmart or whether it's PayPal. We went over some lottery and uh, sweepstakes scam. We went over banking information. Um, we made some, uh, excuse me, we made some suggestions in regards to, all right, the United States Postal Service and how to mail anything that's sensitive. Um, going actually into the post office and then mailing it there. All right, the chief touched on, all right, uh, check washing, how that's done. All right, where they change the pay to order of, that payee, okay, different signature on it. Sometimes they have to keep your routing number and your account number, that's how they're gonna get the funds. But then they'll change the amount. Maybe the check was written out for, we'll say, twenty-five dollars to, all right, the Larchmont Library or something like that. And then somebody changes to twenty-five to twenty-five hundred, and they make the payee Sam Jones, which is usually a bogus name. And then somebody has a bogus driver's license that's made up with Sam Jones, and that's what they're using as ID in the bank. All right. So we've seen a variety of different things. Danielle went over the scam where a $5 bill was dropped. The woman went to pick up the $5 bill. All right, she believes then that the debit card or, or the card that was used, all right, to access the ATM, all right, was taken with, they saw her PIN number, all right, while she was there. Again, be careful of that. There are card readers, we didn't talk about that, that are actually placed on some ATMs. Okay, where somebody actually takes a box and actually puts it right onto the ATM. So when you go in and you're accessing funds on an ATM, you don't realize there's a reader there in place. Okay, and then somebody will come back several hours later and they'll take the reader off that. It's usually done at gas stations and convenience stores. All right, especially gas stations that are self-service, all right, because there's nobody out there. There's no staff from that establishment that's watching what's taking place. Um, so we went over those types of things. If you're ever requested to have cash and somebody's going to come by your house to pick up the cash, you know that that's some type of a fraud or a scam. All right, 100%. Uh, gift cards, nobody's asking you to go out and buy $1,000 worth of gift cards and send it to, to the IRS or, or, or a payment for Connor or anything like that. So anybody's telling you to go out and get gift cards and then they're going to call you up and ask you for the number on the gift cards because they don't need to have that. That was another thing some people came into Larchmont when they were scammed with gift cards and they thought, well, I have the gift card, so how come, all right, I still don't have the value of it? Because the gift card has a a number on it, and then it usually has a code or a PIN number. Once the individual has that, they don't need to have physically the gift card with them. They can already access that funds, whether it's a $100 gift card, $200 gift card, or whatever it might be, you know. So that's another thing. But um, 
What I want to do now is we just did a little recap. I want to now pose questions, and it could be for either Amy, Danielle, myself, okay? Any questions that or concerns that you might have that we haven't gone over, all right? If there's something individual, let's wait until we're done with the program, and then we can address that individually with you. But if there's something you think that the group is going to get, all right, some information out of, and somehow it's going to be preventive, all right, what could be passed along, please, all right, ask us the questions, all right, in regards to any of the th things that we've gone over here, or if there's something you have a concern about that we haven't gone over that we might have missed. How do you think some people are concerned that it could be an inside job as far as when Marinick and the White Plains Post Offices right. are concerned? And I got an email, I thought it was from the Mamaronic police, that said, do not bring your, your mail inside Mamaronic's. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 Bring, it to, bring it to Rye or Harrison or Larchmont that they're safer. She's going to repeat it. Did you want to use that? Have to repeat here. Oh, okay, so she was saying that she got a notification from the post office saying no, no, not to bring, oh, from the police department saying not to bring the mail to that particular post office, which was the village of Mamaronic. Yeah, we did hear about that. It was an inside job. So there are, unfortunately, postal workers that are involved in this so as well. Yep. Yeah. For the time being, yes. I, I live at the Avalon of Mamaronic, the morgue now. And about six months ago, I mailed two letters. And nobody got them. Mm -hmm. And one had a ten dollar bill in it for one mm -hmm. of the grandchildren. Yep. So I don't trust anybody. Not them. First of all, the the uh, mailman who picks up the mail or takes it to the Marinic, I don't trust them. There's nobody minding the store. I know. It's an unfortunate nobody, reality. Oh, anybody. You know, we Hopefully that they're, they're working on we it. The more reports. Like when, uh, this is one of the uh, okay. persons in, in the mail, of uh, the American mm -hmm. mail, not years ago, they were taken uh, from uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the prayer. Right out of the post office. Yeah, the guy in the post office. He was taking the money yeah. out of the, the for the uh, masses well, they, they're gonna have and to flushing it in the toilets. So yep, to do more strict background mm -hmm. checks. Did you report you that incident with the ten dollars? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the more the more so incidents that are reported, the more likely these businesses are to try to prevent these incidents from happening. Go ahead. I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I think you said something about some kind of app on a computer that to, to protect it. What, what I suggest. Oh, you want to tell them about spyware no. and malware? Sure, yeah, there, there are antivirus. services, antivirus services out there. One example is like LifeLock. You can Google these businesses, and for a fee, they'll further protect your information. Yeah, I'm wondering, uh, what is the status of the movement? Uh, this is probably beyond the jurisdiction of local officials to uh, outlaw robocalls. We still get about you know two to five a day with some kind of scam, oh, really? just calling in on the phone, you know, from, yeah. we ignore any uh, yeah. caller that we don't know. But I just wondered if there, if you would know anything yeah. about that movie, or is it simply impossible? Just to answer your question on robocalls, all right, there's a do not call list that you can sign up to. Yeah. You can actually call or you can go online. And, and, and you know what? It will only, it will only work with some of the robocalls, all right. And the do not call, it's not forever either. It's only for one year. Every year you have to go back to the registry, and you have to register again, all right, not to be called again with a robocall, all right. But yes, I've been on the registry every year because I can't stand the robocalls myself. All right, I still get robocalls, especially, all right, in November during the election season, all right, with all the political calls, all right, from one side or the next. Um, but yes, there is a, a registry you can go on. It does help. I can tell you it helps because I know when, when I go on it every year, all right, it reduces the amount of robocalls I get, but some do go, get through. 
We have a question back here. Hello. Um, I feel a little foolish saying this because I, I know I'm getting old and my, I'm not as alert as I used to be, but I called Verizon because I was having trouble with the television. And wow, here comes a Verizon man. And I was thrilled. Open the door. I was going to practically carry him in. I, I never looked for a, a, a identification. And he followed me up to where the TV was. And the odor when he went past me was, it was just like skunk cabbage. It was so bad. And I still didn't think anything. And he came in and he's sitting there working on the TV and his eyeballs are going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, forth, rotating. And like every five, 10 minutes, he would go out to his truck to get something. And it gave me this awful feeling. He did a good job. He wasn't inappropriate in as much as I knew something wasn't right. And when he left, my neighbor said to me, why did you let him in? He, obviously, he's on drugs. Mm. And so I just wanted to say that if you're expecting someone to come to your house to repair something or to come in for any reason, arrange to have somebody else in the house with you. Because I was all alone. I had no idea. And then after he left, Verizon called me and they said, uh, how did you find the worker? Was he polite? Was he... Uh, and, well, yeah, he was polite, but man, he was high. <laughs> and I don't know for high. 80 years old, I never... Don't. I know those eyeballs were like... <laughs> I got out the door, I don't know. But if you're going to have someone come in the house, try to have somebody in the house with you. Good point, yeah. Yeah. I came a little late, so I don't know if it was touched upon. I don't have a landline anymore, but through my cell phone, I can block calls that are not in my contact list or they just don't ring. And if they don't leave a message, I don't call back or follow up. That's good. another good point. Um, we say, all the calls that come in that say potential spam or scam, don't answer those numbers. A lot of these scam artists call from numbers that appear to be legitimate. It'll be an 888 number or an 800 number. We've even seen a victim have a call come in that represented our police department <laughs> landline. It came in as 914-834-1000. So just be aware of that as well. I get my landline ring and the number shows just like my landline mm -hmm. number, like my, I'm calling right. myself. Right. And it looks so legit that mm -hmm. you want to answer. You said, this is like my number. Some, one time it was my name too. Mm -hmm. So you don't In know how it's like calling In a case like that, I you. wouldn't even answer the phone because they're also trying to get your voice. If you pick up the phone, oh. you, all you have to say is one word sometimes and then they'll have your voice now. Oh. So if you say hello and, and then yes. Oh, okay. I just want to thank you all for your service, for all the work that you do, especially you. now when things are very difficult and when you have some areas where they want to defund the police. Mm -hmm. we, we need more police like you. When people go out there and vote, vote for people that support our police. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. When I get a number that I don't recognize, I put it in Google and it'll tell you it's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Then I, I go to my Optimum internet and I block them on my Optimum account. Okay. Because uh, you can save 30 mm -hmm. at a time. All right, we're going to still be here for a couple of minutes afterwards if anybody else, like I said, has something personally want to just touch base with us on. Uh, we want to thank you again. All right. Uh, I want to thank Jill and the rest of the staff for, for having us here. All right. Uh, we appreciate coming out and giving you this information. All right. You're a great group of people. All right. A great, this is a great venue. All right. To have this type of a, a meeting. And we're hoping to do this on somewhat of a regular, all right, on a regular basis. It could be different topics or whatever have you. Um, but we want to give you the information. Again, we want to we wanna harden the target, and the target is you, it's us, it's everybody. All right? And if we can do something or we can give you some information <coughs> that's going to prevent you from being a victim or a loved one, friend, whoever, all right, from being a victim, that's what we're trying to do. When you see something that 
is suspicious, all right, whether it's a person that's, I mean, we had a phone call yesterday. Uh, a neighbor called up because she knew the family next door was on vacation, all right? And she says, I just saw somebody go in a house. I know they're on, they're on vacation, all right? So I don't know what it is, okay? Now, of course, it could be a service worker, and it turned out to be, all right, legit and everything else. But even something like that, call us and let us know. If you get a phone call, all right, somebody claiming that they're from a bank or they're from a credit card company or you just want a sweepstakes or you just want a prize, a lottery or whatever have you, okay, and you think it's a scam or what have you, hang up the phone, give us a call. All right, give us a call, all right? We can give you some guidance. We can give you some suggestions. We can look into it. We want to prevent you from being a crime. Please do not, do not give out your personal information because, uh, and, you know, as the chief ha had said earlier, all right, we had unfortunately, all right, a victim who gave out their information. They got bamboozled out of quite a bit of money, all right, and the bank is not going to make them whole. When I say the bank is going to make you whole, that means it's going to refund, all right, any type of a loss that you might have taken, all right. But when you give out that information, all the information out there, all right, the bank, all right, it's, it's going to be difficult for you to get your funds back, all right? But if you haven't given out any of your information and they've washed a check through your account or what have you, okay, there's a good chance, all right? I'm not making any promises here because I don't work for any financial institution. There's a good chance you're going to get your money back, all right? And what we talked about with the check washing, just so you know, all right, when you go into a bank now and you, if you're a business or you're a person and and you, you go into the bank and you give them your check, you'll see they'll just put the check through a machine. All right, so most of the time, the, the bank teller's not even looking at your check. Or if you're making a deposit, all right, at the ATM, all right, and you're putting a check in there, all right, so it's not necessarily the bank teller's fault or a bank manager, okay, it's just automation, it's just, it, it's just everything. So sometimes things don't get picked up as quick. It's not like somebody's actually looking at every check physically to look at it to see if it's been washed. But the bad guys, they do a good job, all right, with, all right, washing, taking the information, the legitimate information off, all right, and putting fraudulent information. And of course, they're not using their real name. So when they're washing a check, all right, they're putting a fictitious name and then what they're doing is they're creating or they're buying, okay, and on the internet now, especially the dark web, you almost can get anything. They're buying a New York driver's license that looks legit. It's got a barcode on the back just like yours does and mine does, okay, but it's a bogus license, all right? And it might even have somebody else. The client ID number might be a legitimate number, but it's somebody else's, but it's got a different name on it. So when the person is going into the bank, all right, and the bank teller says, I need, I, they're trying to cash a check, and they says, I need a form of identification. They take out a driver's license, all right. The bank teller doesn't know if the license is bogus or not, all right. They don't have the capabilities to do that. They're not law enforcement, all right. They look at the license, okay, it looks legit, all right. They think it matches. It's the person's photo, but it's not the right name, date of birth, address, etc. okay. Then they cash in the check. And most times, like I said, if you haven't given out any of your personal information, the banking institution, all right, usually will make you whole. They'll reimburse you for whatever that loss was because it's not your fault that your check was stolen and it was washed. But if you give out your information, all right, to somebody, all right, and of course it's, you know, you don't suspect it. It's unsuspecting, all right, you're giving your information out. It's difficult to be made whole. All right, so thank you again, and like I said, we'll be here for a few minutes if you have any questions.